graced for today. Blessings, everybody. We are grateful for the blessings of the Lord that are chasing us down and overtaking us. He is faithful to his word. There is no God like our God. There is no God like our God. He is mighty to save. He delivers. He rescues. He brings healing. And we are grateful that we serve a mighty God. We serve the mighty God. Yes, we do. We serve the mighty God. Blessings to all of you. And um, I hope that you had a wonderful weekend. And I appreciate uh, those of you who prayed for us over the weekend. And uh, whenever you think about Grace for Today or think about me, just call my name. And uh, you get to say that lady. The Lord knows who she is. Yes, he does. God bless everybody. We are grateful. And God bless each and every one of you. All right. Hey, y'all. Give you all a few moments to come on and then we're going to get started. Thank you for those of you who share as soon as you come on. Good morning. And um, we will start. And we're still talking about um, I am victorious. I am victorious. No matter what comes my way, I still must remind myself that I have the victory. Uh, some days it may not feel like it. <laughs> some days it may not even look like it. But we can rest assured that we have the victory because of Jesus. We have the victory because of Jesus. Hey, Sister Anita. God bless you all. I'm glad to see you on. God bless you, Mr. Quinn. You know, I can't, I can't see without my glasses. I'm trying to. Okay. Now, hey, y'all. I know I need to stop speaking to everybody, but good morning, everyone. Blessings to you. May the grace of God be upon you, and you are truly victorious. I just want to remind you about my book. I usually just at the end, but somebody told me I should probably do it at the beginning. Don't forget about our YouTube channel. It'll be This video will be uploaded there in about, as soon as we finish, about 10 or 15 minutes. And then, of course, my book on Amazon, 30 Lessons on Un Unapologetic Living, and uh, pick up a copy, share it with someone. It's a great time to um, pick up a few Christmas gifts. I Listen, I shop for Christmas all year long. It's a thing. So let's look today. We're looking at Revelations chapter 12, verse 11. Revelations chapter 12. The book of Revelation, sorry. Revelation, no plural. Chapter 12, verse 11. Um, so we're still talking about I am victorious. And we should remind ourselves, and I say that often because we need to remind the Lord, but this is something we need to remind ourselves, that we have the victory. We speak victory over our families. Now, it's up to them to conform, but we speak victory over ourselves. Sometimes, I know that people will say that you pray for, you know, your, you know, your family, but, uh, and, and your family and your friends. Sometimes, you need to recall and pray for yourself. You need to pray for yourself. Good morning, everyone. Um, so let's look at this. We're looking at Revelations chapter 12, verse 11 today. I want to read it to you. Um, I love how Sister Sylvia attacks her sons. God bless those boys who are doing great things uh, in the sports world, but also for the kingdom of God. We speak life over them. We speak the power of God over them, that they stay grounded in truth. Grounded in truth and the favor of God would be upon them. Now, this is what I pray for my folk and that the doors that God wants open will open, not just what they want, but that the door that will cause them to give glory to God and will benefit them, will prosper them and increase them that it will uh, produce in their lives. You know, we've been talking about being producers, uh, but God wants young men, young women who will produce for the kingdom of God. Wherever they are, they're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus. Trail! They're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation. We need young men who will stand on the word, who will believe the word of God and speak life. I know they have this thing now, speak truth to power, where there is truth, 
and it's in the word of God. And there is certainly power available for those who believe and speak and live according to the word of God. Let's look at Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. The King James Version says it this way. It says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And the word, right, Sister Reuben, those grand boys are covered. I know because y'all pray, but I know we pray. We speak over them. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Let me read that again. And they, these believers, their testimony was that they overcame the adversary by the blood of the lamb. We, we forget and we don't teach about um, the, the validation, the validity of the, the necessity of the blood of the lamb. They overcame because of the blood of Jesus. That's what Jesus gave. But we have to do something. And by the word of their testimony, what they testified, what they believed. And they, but Paul said, I believe it was, he said, I have believed, therefore I have spoken. Well, everybody is speaking what they believe, but we need to speak what we believe too. We need to believe the word of God. We must speak the word of God. We must decree and declare what the word of God says about us. We start with believing what he says about us. I am victorious. I've overcome the world. Jesus overcame the world, but he says that we overcome uh, by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony, not somebody else's, ours. What has God done for you lately? How has he kept you? What has he turned around for you? What has he moved out your way? What doors has he opened? What doors did he close? Listen, I'm all for closed doors. If those doors don't lead me to the plan of God, to the path of God, to the power of God. Close any door that doesn't take me to where God has designed and destined me to be. Other than that, Lord, have your way. Help me to know you better. Help me to walk with you. Help me to believe um, that your word will work for us. Missionary Green, I'm not sure. It may be, um, you may need to um, click off of your Wi-Fi and then click back on. I'm not sure. But when we choose to daily follow what God has done for us and follow him and share, right, Sister Janet, what he's done for us. We overcome by our testimony, our testimony. You may say, I, I don't have a big testimony. Has he done anything for you? Has he done anything for you? Has he done anything for you? If he's done anything for you, then it's a testimony. Listen, when I was when I was working at Wesley, that's a long time ago. It's changed names two or three times since then. I was working at Wesley. My knee was swollen. I was going to work anyway, limping like I only had like like I had a leg that didn't work. Well, it didn't. My knee was so swollen, my hand would fit on top of it. But God healed me. God healed me. God healed me. It's still a testimony. Hallelujah. It's still showing the power of God. When I hydroplaned and the, the, the car was, uh, I just passed an 18 wheeler. There was no traffic. God did it. I hydroplaned, did a 180 and my car backed off into the ravine, never cut off. My car started heading toward the pine trees on Highway 59. I was going south outside Laurel. And, and God, I, I looked at it and I began to call Jesus. My car turned around. I wasn't turning the wheel. It turned around. And I heard the Holy Ghost remind me of what my driver's ed teacher taught. When your car is going that direction, you don't need to be. I was on my brakes, but they weren't stopping. And God told, reminded me what to do, to turn your will the opposite direction. I began turning my will and my car turned back around. God did it. 
I wasn't so smart and so brilliant. God did it. Listen, I'm grateful for the little things we call it, but he spared my life. He spared my life. Let me read Revelations 12 and 11 to you from the Amplified. And it says, and they have, and they have overcome, conquered him by means of the blood of the lamb and by the utterance of their testimony. Utterance is what you speak. By me speaking my testimony, by me sharing, speaking, maybe you writing it out. I remember a young man who got saved under my mom's ministry. And he wrote out little tracts that testified how God delivered him from drugs, how God rescued his life, how God changed him. And last I saw him a few years back, he's still walking with God. Listen, it's not too small. It's not too little. Did he do it for you? Then it's a testimony. They overcame by the means, him by over him, the enemy, by means of the blood of the lamb and by the utterance of their testimony. For they did not love and cling to life even when faced with death. We must love God more. We can't love this world. You know, I'm going to probably do a series about that that soon because we love the world so much. The scripture says, love not the world or the things that are in the world, the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. Be careful that you don't love these things so much that you don't love God. That if you had to choose between stuff and God, that you would be like, that you would be like Lot's wife who loved Sodom and Gomorrah so much that she was willing to disobey God and turn back to look because her heart was back in Sodom. Her heart was in Gomorrah. Let's not love our stuff so much that we're willing to disobey God in order to get it. That's the definition of the word lust, L-U-S-T. I know everybody always thinks of it as sexual, but really lust is desiring something so much that we are willing to disobey God in order to get it. We're willing, our heart wants to have it so much that we will disobey God in order to retrieve it, to keep it, to maintain it. Whatever it is. Let's love God more. Let's love God more. For they did not love and cling to life even when faced with death, holding their lives cheap till they had to die for their witness. They're witnessing. We are called to live a life that pleases God. You don't know what pleases God? Well, here, pick up the Bible and begin reading it. Read the epistles. Start with Ephesians if you like. Start with Matthew to learn what the disciples did. But the epistles give you practical daily living tools. Here, the Passion Translation says it this way that I'm going to pray. They conquered him completely through the blood of the lamb and the powerful word of his testimony. They triumphed because they did not love and cling to their own lives, even when faced with death. We must love God. See, I don't know that we love God like that yet. Not over here in the Western culture. We, 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 don't, we love our stuff. We love the accolades and the applause of men more. We love for people to, to call our names. You ain't got to call my name. We, we must love God more. How do you get the victory? I love him more. And I testify about what he's done for me, how he's opened doors for me, how he's made ways for me. Even when everything wasn't favorable, when I suffered loss, I still am victorious. I'm victorious. I'm victorious. Beloved, you need to speak to yourself and remind yourself, I have the victory because I have I because of the blood of the lamb and because of the word of my testimony. Of my testimony. Make known his deeds among the people. What is that testimony? Let's pray. My time is gone. Father, we thank you that you give us opportunities to testify to share the truth of your word.
to remind people how much you love them, how much you care for them. Lord, we ask you even now that you would speak over us, that you would give us uh, uh, words to encourage someone else, to speak life to them. Father, we pray for those who have suffer, who've suffered loss. We pray for the Ramey family. Cover them. We speak the comfort of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Comfort them. Father, we just pray for the Sloan family and for my sister. I pray, dear God, that you would just give them comfort. Give direction. Let the peace of God come. You are the God of all comfort who comforts us so that we can comfort others. And we thank you for what you've begun in us and for what you're doing. Father, we thank you even now for your every, every, every viewer and those who will view. We pray that you let the truth of your word saturate their hearts. Give them a yearning to know you more, to know you deeper, and let your glory be revealed in their lives and the anointing break and destroy every yoke. We thank you for it and receive it done. In the matchless name of Jesus, so it is. Amen. God bless everybody. I pray the word of God will bless you and that you will find new truths in the word. Nothing new to God, but that you begin seeing him. Seeing him throughout your day. Seeing him in the nuances of things happening in your day. And that the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard and guide your heart and your mind. And direct you into the love of God. God bless each and every one of you. I pray the Lord will keep you and help you. I hope that you will share the video. Type in catch the replay. Hashtag graced for today. I hope that you'll remember to go to Amazon or to my um, website. Order a book. Share it with somebody. 30 lessons on unapologetic living. Let's live unapologetically. Which means living life without regret. And that's letting the word of God guide and guard our hearts. All right. So. Join me in the morning at 7.15 a.m. Central Time. And until then, remember this. Time spent in the Word of God is never wasted. And you have been graced for today. Have a great day, everybody. Peace.